Hello my friends, you are watching Shinobi Pixel. My name is Alan and today I'm gonna teach you the quickest and easiest way I can think of to make 8-bit graphics inside of Photoshop. Okay, sorry, let me clarify something. When I say make 8-bit graphics, I actually mean converting existing artwork into 8-bit graphics. If you were here because you thought we were gonna make 8-bit graphics from scratch, I'm afraid that is content for another tutorial. And this is a technique you can use on illustrations or photographs, whatever the case may be. But first, I'm gonna show you what I would consider the wrong way to do this. As you can see, I've got a little bit of artwork here, and I am going to first and foremost duplicate my layer. And you can do that by either hitting Control or Command J on your keypad, or simply drag your layer down to this plus icon in your layers menu, and um, that'll create a duplicate. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, because I'm really a stickler for this, is I'm going to rename it, and we're gonna call this Mosaic. Some of you might already know what I'm on about. I'm gonna use the Mosaic filter to show you why you shouldn't actually use this technique. So, I wanna convert this to a smart object, so I'm going to right click and select Convert to Smart Object, and then of course, we have a smart object layer. Now I've hidden my original artwork because it's not gonna matter here for the time being. And also, noteworthy, this is a transparent uh, image at this point. You can see there's transparent pixels involved. So, the wrong way. Don't do this way. I'm just showing you why not to do this, okay? Go up to Filter. Go down to Pixelate and select Mosaic. Now you can see, obviously, it's pixelating and I can adjust the slider to determine how pixelated I want this to be. Now this is a great way if you're, you know, trying to censor someone's face or something inside of a photo, but it's not ideal if you're trying to make pixel art and I'm going to show you why. I mean, first and foremost, 8-bit artwork has 256 colors and if you simply use the mosaic filter, well, you're not actually filtering out any of the additional colors that wouldn't exist in an 8-bit image, depending on your cell size and the complexity of your image. But also, this generates semi-transparent pixels. So let me bump this cell size up to 20. That's a nice even number I like. And I'll hit OK. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I want to show you what happens when I hide my background layer. You can see there are actually semi-transparent pixels. And I mean, it may look good enough, but it's not going to be true of an 8-bit image, okay? May I propose a better way to do this? Go to your original artwork layer. Again, we're going to duplicate it. So I'll just drag my layer down there. And I'm going to rename this indexed color. Turn the visibility on, and I'm going to convert to a smart object, of course, once again. And I've hidden my original art. So the next thing I'm going to do is double click inside of the thumbnail. And here we go, we can see I've now got my smart object and everything looks as it should, all right? Let's just verify the dimensions of this image. We'll go image, size. It's 1800 by 1200. Again, nice round numbers. Now, what we're going to do is change the image mode, okay? Go up to Image, then Mode, and then Indexed Color, and click that. Now, it's gonna ask if you wanna merge layers. This is important. This is the reason I duplicated my original artwork and converted this to a smart object, because this method, unfortunately, is not going to be a non-destructive form of editing. That is the one downside to doing it this way. However, because we've got our original artwork in the main PSD, it's all good. So go ahead and hit OK. And then what's going to happen is this indexed color menu is going to come up. Now, you can probably leave all of the uh, settings the way you see them on my screen. The important thing here is the colors are 256. That is true of an 8-bit graphic. There are only 256 colors inside of an 8-bit graphic. You're also going to want to have your transparency turned on, because if you turn it off, it's going to generate a white background, 
and that's probably not what you're going to want. Now as far as these options go, dithering, noise, diffusion, that just has to do with how the colors look. So if you look really closely at the tire of this sport bike, if I change my setting, you can see maybe, I don't even know if it's showing up honestly on the screen for you, but I would suggest just leaving it at noise. Okay, so we'll select OK, and then you can see it's now flattened my image. Now importantly, because we are in an indexed mode, I can't add layers. I can't really draw anything with a semi-transparency, and you can see what happens if I try. Let me bump up my pen. I've selected a brush here that should have a soft edge, but you can see obviously it does not because, again, we're in an indexed color mode. So I'm just going to undo those brush strokes. All right. We've set up the image, but now we want to actually convert it into something with pixels. Now, you could not go and select any filters because indexed files are pretty minimal. They aren't going to let you do much. But what we can do is go over to image, image size, and remember, our original graphic is 1800 by 1200. I'm going to change my height to, I don't know, let's say 90 pixels. And now what you're going to see here, I've got a preview screen, I can zoom right in. That is what our image is going to look like. And you can dial this up or down. So if I want more graphics, I can maybe make this 100, 120. And you can see there's a little more detail in the cyclist. Uh, if I want fewer details, I can drop it right down to 60. And then when I zoom in, you can see the, uh, the details are lessened, okay? So it all depends on the look you're going for. In this case, I was pretty happy with 90 pixels, so I'm gonna hit okay. Now, my, uh, my image has shrunk drastically, of course, because I just resized it, right? But I don't want it to be this small. I want it to be back the same size it was before with all of these pixels. No problem. I'm going to go image, image size, and bump it back to the original that it was, which was, of course, 1800 by 1200. And now what happens is, oh, hey, look, there's my cyclist on a transparent background. But guess what? Hard edges. There are no semi-transparent pixels here. So now if I hit save, and I close this and go back to my main PSD, you can see now my cyclist with the indexed color has a transparent background. Now I can size it up or down as much as I want because it's a smart object and those pixels retain their fidelity, which is really great. And if you look at the difference between the index color and the mosaic color, you can see why the indexed color version is probably a more preferable scenario to go with, right? That is my preferred method because the edges of your pixels are sharper. That is true of 8-bit graphics and even 16-bit graphics, the old school stuff that you're probably looking to emulate. Like I said, you can use this same method on photographs. So. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, leave a comment for me if you have any questions or uh, if you want to tell me how you've used this. I would love to see your artwork, uh, anything you've made based on my tutorials. That would be awesome. And if you haven't already, hitting the subscribe button would let you see a lot more cool content from me, including tutorials and speed art, things like that. And of course, follow me on Instagram. I am Shinobi Pixel Studios. So, once again, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye.